lesson, we're going to talk about linear functions, their slope, and their applications. Let's first define what a linear function is. A linear function is defined as the function with respect to x equal to mx plus b, where m and b have to be constants. If m is equal to 0, so if our slope is 0, this is known as the constant function. So we would also call this y equals b, so y equals a number, so it would be a horizontal line. If m equals 1 and b equals 0, the function is known as the identity function. So f of x equals x or y equals x. We can find the slope of a line as long as we have two points. The slope is given by rise over run, the change in y over the change in x, or by taking our second y value minus our first over our second x value minus the first, or vice versa. Notice though, it doesn't matter which order we subtract them in as long as you're consistent in the numerator and denominator. Let's graph the function f of x equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1 and determine its slope. The first thing I'm going to do is substitute values in for x so I can determine what their y values are so that I can find some points that are on this equation, or excuse me, on this plane. I'm going to choose values that are easily divisible by 3, such as 3 and 9. When I substitute negative 2 thirds times 3 plus 1, I end up with negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. Similarly, when I substitute 9 in, I end up with negative 2 thirds times 9 plus 1. Negative 2 thirds times 9 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. We now have two pairs of points, 3, negative 1, and 9, negative 5. Using our slope formula then, I will go ahead and find the slope, taking our second y value of negative 5 minus our first y value of negative 1 over 9 minus 3, which is equal to negative 4 6 or negative 2 thirds. So notice I plotted my points 3, negative 1, and 9, negative 5. And I found the slope of these points, which I could also do by counting, falling 4 units and I run 6 units gives me simplified form of negative 2 thirds. It doesn't matter which two points we use to find the slope, so let's find a third point just to drive this point home. I'm going to choose the point 6, or x value of 6, since it's also divisible by 3. Negative 2 thirds times 6 plus 1 gives us negative 4 plus 1, or negative 3. If we choose two separate pairs of points, such as 3, negative 1, and 6, negative 3, we can now find the slope. I'm going to take 6, excuse me, negative 3 minus negative 1 and 6 minus 3. That also gives me a simplified form of negative 2 thirds. When I plot my point 6, negative 3, I can see that I can get from our first point by dropping 2 units and running 3. Dropping 2 units and running 3. This drives home that it doesn't matter which two points we use to find the slope. As long as we do the subtraction in the right order, we'll find the same result. Horizontal lines are given by the equation y is equal to a number, or we know f of x is the same as y is equal to a number. If a line is horizontal, the change in y for any two points will be zero. Vertical lines are given by the equation x equals a number. These are not functions. Because it is a vertical line, the change in x is 0. Thus, the slope is not defined because we know we cannot divide by 0. Let's take a look at what this might look like. Here is our point x equals negative 2. It doesn't matter which value of x I choose, my value will always be negative 2. So when I insert a line, no matter which, I, which value I choose for my x value or my y value, x is always going to be negative 2. So our slope is undefined. By choosing two points, I can see that when I take those two points, I'll end up simplifying to 0 in my denominator and that my slope is undefined. 
the average rate of change. Slope is also considered to be the average rate of change. We can use these two together. To find the average rate of change between any two data points on a graph, all we need to do is determine the slope of that line that passes through those particular points. The number of people participating in the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP, has increased from 17.2 million in 2000 to 47.6 million in 2013. Find the average rate of change in the number of people using food stamps from 2000 to 2013. We have two points here. We have the point the year 2000, which there were 17.2 million people. And we also have the point 2013, where there are also 47.6 million. We know that the average rate of change is the same as slope, so we can find the change in y over the change in x. I can take then 47 and 6 tenths minus 17 and 2 tenths over 2013 minus 2000. This gives me 30.4 over 13, which simplifies to 2.3. This tells us that in the average rate of change over this 13 year period was an increase of 2.3 million participants per year. Now granted from year to year this might change from 2000 to 2001 and 2001 to 2002 might be different, but the average rate of change over these two particular years when we're talking about them, the average rate of change over these 13 years was an increase of 2.3 million participants per year. Increased oil production in the United States has resulted in decreased imports of crude oil. The total number of barrels imported in 2008 was 3,590,000. This number decreased to 2,810,000 in 2013. Find the average rate of change in crude oil imports from 2008 to 2013. We will use the points 2008, which corresponded to 3,590,000 barrels and 2013 which relates 2,810,000. Let's go ahead and find the average rate of change by finding our change in y over the change in x. 2,810,000 subtract 3,590,000 over 2013 minus 2008 gives us negative 780,000 over 5 and when we divide we get negative 156,000. This tells us that the average rate of change over this five year particular period was a decrease of 156,000 barrels. It shouldn't surprise us that we end up with a negative number because it does tell us that we're decreasing. Slope intercept form is given by our linear function f of x equals mx plus b. This is written in slope intercept form. There are two things that we can pull from this equation. The constant m in front of x is known as our slope, which we've been finding, and our y-intercept can be found by taking 0, b. Find the slope in the y-intercept of the line with the equation y is equal to negative 25 hundredths x minus 3 and 8 tenths. We can pull, since it's already solved for x, we can pull the value in front of x and identify that as our slope. So our slope is negative 25 hundredths. And our y-intercept is negative 3.8. So we write that as a point, 0, negative 3, and 8 tenths. Let's find the slope and the y-intercept of the equation of the line 3x minus 6y minus 7 is 0. Well, we know that we can pull information when our equation is set equal to y. So let's solve for y so that we are in slope-intercept form. Then we can just pull the slope and pull the y-intercept. The first thing I'm going to do to start getting y by itself is subtract 3x from both sides. This then provides us with negative 6y minus 7 is negative 3x. I will then add 7 to both sides, giving us negative 6y equal to negative 3x plus 7. Notice that I'm putting my x before my, my number by itself. Then I'm gonna divide everything by negative six. When I take negative three x divided by negative six, we end up with positive one half. 
and 7 divided by negative 6 gives us negative 7 sixths. Now that we have our information in slope-intercept form, we can pull directly our slope of 1 half and write our y-intercept as 0, negative 7 sixths. Let's graph y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. This is already written in y equals mx plus b, so slope-intercept form. I know that my, ver my point, excuse me, my slope is negative 2 thirds and that my y-intercept is going to be 0, 4. Let's plot some points. I know my y-intercept is 0, 4, and I can find my next point by starting at my y-intercept, falling 2 units and running 3 units. And I can find another one, fall 2, run 3. The last thing I need to do is insert or draw a straight line connecting all of my points together. There is no proven way to predict a child's adult height, but a linear function can be used to estimate it. Given the sum of the child's parent's height, the adult height m in inches of a male child whose parent's total height is x in inches can be estimated with the function m, is, m, m of x is equal to 0.5x plus 2.5. The adult height f in inches of a female child whose parent's total height in inches can be estimated with the function f of x equals 0.5x minus 2.5. So it, depending upon if we're a male child or a female child will, will depend upon which equation we're going to use. It's asking us to estimate the height of a female child's parents whose total height is 135 inches. And then what is the domain of this function? Since we know we are dealing with a female child, we will use the f of x function. I do know the total height because x represents the total height in inches, which we are given, we can substitute that in for x. So 0.5x or 5 tenths x, or 5 tenths times 135 minus 2 and a half. Multiplying, we get 67 and a half minus 2 and a half is equal to 65. So we can say that a female child whose parent's total height is 135 inches, we can estimate that that child's height might be approximately 5 feet 5 inches. And I'm going to say that our domain is going to be between 100 and 170. Notice that our domain is the total height. We have to be realistic of what the average total height of two adults, one male and one female, might be, which is why our domain is open and it's a good estimate of what they might be. And this concludes our lesson on 1.3. Thanks for joining us.